The next area of the Clinical Nutrition Center patient chart that uh, this video will start to look at. Now that we've finished all of the subtabs under chart is tests. Uh, tests is going to include any tests we might do uh, for a patient. Uh, so in tests, let's go ahead and click labs. You'll see similar to when you click chart and you got all these as a, a nice quick submenu, the, the test area gives you all of these tabs here just in a convenient access here. So these buttons and the buttons in tests do exactly the same thing. Uh, but uh, we found these a little bit quicker and easier to work with uh, if you're wanting to go you know, between labs and EKG and UA and so forth. So we've got uh, six types of tests uh, that are programmed right now and others may be added. Uh, this video is just going to look at labs and later videos will look at the other types of tests. So here we are in Ethan Lazarus tests and this is the labs table. You can see in the view it really just shows you the date and a couple pertinent numbers. Uh, and so uh, there's going to be various ways of entering labs into the Clinical Nutrition Center patient chart. Uh, really there's three basic ways that we're going to be adding labs. One way we could add them would be to type them in, but that's very inefficient so we don't really want to do that. Another way we could scan the labs and attach them, but if we do that we can't track uh, the patient's labs and uh, the computer won't know if they're normal or not, so that's not very helpful. Or we can import data straight from Quest Labs uh, and there's going to be two ways to do that. I just want to show you one sample way that we would import labs for a patient. So we'll talk separately about how to get the data from Quest Labs to the computer. That'll be a topic for a separate video. But for now, let's just assume we've gone ahead and we already got the, the lab test from Quest. And let's go ahead and say add. And we'll add a new lab test. And so assume that the date of entry is today, December 15th, that the Clinical Nutrition Center ordered it. So sometimes we may be uh, adding lab that, that we did not order, and we track whether we ordered it or not on each lab. So if we release records, we'll release just the labs that we ordered. We can attach a file if we need to, for example, a scan of the labs. Uh, but that's also where we're going to attach the exported data. Uh, from Quest. So I went ahead and uh, copied a lab file just to my desktop and let's see I called that Ethan Lazarus Labs. So let's see if I can find that down here. So when you export a lab from Quest you'll you'll have it in a designated folder on the computer. Uh, I just went ahead and put a sample there. And all you're going to need to do if you're wanting to import lab from Quest is select that file, scroll to the bottom, you see all the numbers are blank right now, and when you click Add, it's going to populate it for you. So I clicked Add, and here's a message from the computer for me. It says the name and the date of birth on selected record and the attached labs match. The labs in the record were successfully updated. So I went ahead and checked for a name match and a birth date match. Now if it doesn't find those, it, it'll still go ahead and add it, but it's going to give you a warning up here and in case there was a, a typo or, or, or something like that. It will go ahead and add it. We could take it back out. But let's see what it did. So it went ahead and imported that lab file. So you can see now uh, the December 15th we have a lab. So we can go ahead and view what it did. Click the view icon. And you can see it automatically populated the glucose, cholesterol, LDL, HDL, so on and so forth. It also went ahead and it gives me a normal range and we just have it right now pulling quests normals for men and women. At this point I have not made it pull normals by age. It's important to note that these normals might not apply to children or to the elderly. But these are going to be typical normal ranges for most patients. And we've also programmed the chart to highlight anything not in the normal range to make it easy to pick out any potential problems. So you can see the blood sugar is above the normal range. 
The uric acid is outside of the normal range. And the rest of the labs are in the normal range. Now when the labs were added, several things happened. First of all, assuming the front office is adding the labs, the reviewed by is blank, and as soon as this gets added, the second it goes in, uh, all medical providers will receive that test on the left menu under tests. So you can see under labs, um, now well actually patient Ethan Lazarus has three different labs that need to be signed off on. And you can see um, actually four different labs that need to be signed off on. So if I'm the provider and I want to review the labs and only providers are able to sign off on labs, I can click Edit. Uh, when you look through the labs, you can go ahead and review them. There's a few different options here. Um, I might just want to sign off on it and instruct the staff to review with the patient at the next office visit. I might call the patient with their results. I might want them just to get their results in their email box. I might be there with them and say that I reviewed with them at the office visit. Or I could select phone to ask the front office to go ahead and call the patient, which will generate a staff to do so that the front uh, will be told to call the patient. I'll go ahead and select that I've reviewed this lab today. And let's say I have comments. Uh, please call patient. The blood sugar and uric acid just a little high. Let's recheck these in one month. Um, it's also important to note that there's an others field. In others is a spot for any labs that aren't the standard tracked labs. For example, I'm not currently tracking um, a blood estrogen level. And if any labs come back that aren't in the standard, they'll be listed here as an other lab. So let's go ahead and update this note. Oops. Got to go ahead and sign off on it. If I'm going to sign off on it, I need to actually put in my digital signature. So there's my digital signature. And I'll sign off. Now when I signed off on that, you can see that it moved down below the other labs that haven't been signed off on yet. So anytime you look at a tests table, um, anything that needs review will be on the top. And then anything that's been reviewed will be below those. So it makes it real easy to find the test that needs to be signed off on. When I signed off on this, and since I asked for a phone call to be made, when the front office uh, looks at their computer, they're going to see uh, staff to do uh, over here that's going to ask them to please call patient with lab results. Uh, so we'll need some more videos on how to handle labs and how to do a, a mass uh, import so we can uh, bulk import uh, all of the labs from Quest with one click. But we'll save that for another video and we'll need to take a look at how to get these single tests like this one out of Quest uh, uh, internet portal. So we'll talk about that in another video as well. Thanks and that's a quick look at how to add labs.